Hey guys, Zay will be back to destroy more toys. And I'm a very fair person after our latest victim, Woody. We should target his best buddy, Buzz Lightyear. And here he is, already without his limbs. I bought it for really cheap on eBay because of how dirty it is, and one of his wings just couldn't snap back in properly. Look at all this crap. Don't worry, all his parts are present. I just removed them to do some uh, research. The biggest problem with this bus is the shoulder articulation, as it's being blocked by this black piece, which should have been a separate piece like this Takaratomi's bus like years arm. This arm is able to rest all the way down and it even has a ball jointed wrist. Not gonna lie, I'm so tempted to just swap in those Takaratomi's arm and just call it a day. But I can already hear all the comments shouting at me to do it the right way. <sighs> I guess peer pressure for the win. So I took the original arm apart. There is no other way. You must be prepared to do some damage because of these two packs. It's not gonna pry off easy. Use a flat tip screwdriver on both sides to remove the back piece because the front is screwed on. And don't look at the damage because you will cry. Now the bicep. I probably should have started with this because apparently some buzzers out there have this piece glued on tight. Which has to happen to me, of course. It's glued under the fixed screw which makes it impossible to open. Luckily, I have an extra from the utility belt buzz and if yours is not glued, it will be very, very easy to remove. See this hole? Yeah, this is where they glued the fixed screw instead of just using a real screw in the first place. Geniuses. With that out of the way, we can separate the grey pieces to mod them. The thing that is blocking our articulation is the grey sphere, which has an opening that is too short unlike the Takaratomis, which allows the joint to slide down 90 degrees. So let's just cut it off, right? Slow down. The inner circular joint is too fat. It needs to lose its right side in order to move more freely like this. And now we can cut the sphere, and the communicator arm is done. Easy peasy, light years. So I did the laser arm the wrong way. Great job, amazing, awesome. After wiping the sweat off my eyes, I remembered that I have a spare arm that is glued shut. If I could somehow remove the back piece, I could potentially swap out the grey sphere to redo it the right way. Screw it, I'm just gonna cut it open, get the screws off, and we have a second chance. Quick, mark the right spot so that you won't mess up again. Snip, snap, and we are back on track. Finally. We need a break from all this and start working on his head. Similar to Woody, we have amazing game data from Kingdom Hearts. Just remove his armor pieces and work on his face. He will be sleeping at first, and if you can't remove the eyelids, just push them into the eyeballs. Nobody will know. What I want is his toy mode face from Toy Story 1 and 2. I've actually seen people selling a bus head which looks suspiciously similar to this free model but they only moved the eyebrows and forgot about the muscles around them and it looks so strange. Anyway, don't buy it because you can get it for free on DeviantArt. Just refer to some screenshots of his face from different angles and have some fun. After opening his mouth and adjusting his teeth, we can sharpen those details and scan a Toy Story Collection bus head to determine the right size digitally. This is what they look like side by side. I want to make sure the shapes are right so that the new head can fit into the body just right. I also replicated the circular joint below and we are ready to print. Before that, I want to try and fix the arms with these clear Christmas ornaments recommended by Jordi from Toy Story NL. It's 4cm wide and it fits really well. But it's a little too long because it's covering the holes on both sides, which means more cutting. This thing is so fragile though, I don't want to break it, nor do I want broken pieces on my floor ready to tear into my toes. So I decided to just sand it down to my desired height while trying not to jump out of my own skin from this lovely sound. Perfect. But I forgot that there should be a hole in the middle, which did not work out. I love it. 
Back to the scanner, I attached it to Tom Hanks' head because it kept failing without an object with distinct features and I basically did the same thing but digitally. So much easier this way! Oh yeah, and there is also an indent along the sides of the semi-sphere which I'm sure I wouldn't be able to pull off on that Christmas ornament. Another point for the computer. And as a gift that keeps on giving, we have more goodies from the Kingdom Hearts model, decals. You don't even need to buy this, just clean it up from the textures, scale it accordingly and we have everything we need. If you're too lazy to do it yourself, I am thinking of sharing some of my decals including light years on my coffee page for members to keep this channel alive. Let me know what you think. Speaking of which, thank you Jim for the one-off coffee and also Tutu for the 5k Q membership. You have essentially just watched my videos 5,000 times with just one click. Thank you for the support and now we can print. I took some time to clean the parts up, remove the sticker residues and send the parts for repainting. But not before we remove this piece of plastic and have some mandatory sanding fun. Do that for the other three sides and you will have this. For the wrist, I want to use a ball joint to articulate it. It snaps together to form a pack. Next, you want to cut the Hmm, no, I don't want to trigger any bad behavior. Remove the protrusion below the hand. Yes. Drill a hole through the circular disc, insert our pack, cut off the excess, and glue it. Next, drill into the hands, just big enough for the pack, and it should insert without issues. Now we have to modify the forearm. For the front guard, you just need to sand it wide enough to accommodate the new round pack and you don't even need to modify the meter piece. But for the back piece, you will have to do more sanding to make way for the wrist to move downwards and inwards. Great, printing is done. And no, those are not light near titties, okay? Please, seriously guys, oh my god. What the f- Let's get this articulation mod done before we paint, alright? One thing I did not account for is this thick ass tube that is too big to insert into our hole. We cannot cut it because of the wires, so I took a totally calculated risk and cut our 3D print. And it did not break! I, I, I knew it. And we managed to squeeze it through. The other thing I did not account for is this white connector thingy that is used to connect the arms to the body. It's blocking our black semi-spheres movement, so I went ahead and cut some stuff off. I honestly don't know what I'm doing. There's probably a better way to do this because I'm cutting a lot of things off. And also because of the additional thickness from our semi-sphere, we still cannot connect the shoulders to the white thingy. So I decided to thin the grey piece and the white piece as well until we are able to connect the white piece without compromising on articulation. Yep, no one understood what I just said. It's okay, moving on. Finally, we will attempt to repaint the body and improve the glow in the dark feature at the same time with the lit glow powder. There's a lot of inconsistency with how to use it and I don't even know if this super base is a requirement or just a marketing gimmick. I mean, it's called super. But I got it anyway, and it turns out to be too pale in color. After researching, I found out that you can actually mix colors into the powder. So I mixed in some green, masked the back part to do some testing, and it looks decent. Tested the front part, looks great, and I went ahead with the rest. A lot of masking. Ta-da! Painting is done. Aren't you glad you can skip it? Let's test the result. People told me that the original bus has glow in the dark paint, so I compared it with my repainted version. Indeed, it seems to have some glow pigments, but it just vanished immediately. I mean, even my thumb glows longer than it. <sighs> ah, isn't this beautiful? Just wow. Okay, back to reality. We have a very scratched up dome and I'm just gonna use this poly watch cream to remove the scratches. Squirt a little lotion and rub away. Repeat until satisfaction. I don't know if you can tell but it's a lot better. I hope I can't actually tell really. 
but whatever the head is more important, I managed to match the purple, mask them off to reveal just the face, used our secret formula for skin, white for both teeth and eyeballs, and it's ready for eye decals. I printed a few sizes and the smallest one turned out to be the right size, dipped some water, slide it out, position the eye, set it with set it with the decal setter and for the other eyes, we need to respect the crookedness even though it's bugging me inside. Eyebrows, blush, gloss for the teeth and spray it all over the head. Of course, we cannot forget about Andy. This is proof that he finally got his ends right and we will finish off with some stickers. Yes, I know I did not fix the laser or the wings but overall, I think we did okay. The shoulders can finally move down, we can replicate the laser shooting scene with the new wrist pack. The new head looks great and you will not believe how long the glow can last. Look at that, oh my god. Here's a comparison with the original Buzz and a side by side with my Woody. Consider supporting the channel with coffee, check out my other videos and I will see you next time.